Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, welcome back once again to another fun-filled episode of Paul and Mario try to talk intelligently about the Buffalo Bills roster. Um, yeah, he's, he's just a big dumb animal, folks. They're getting worse and worse. <laughs> they keep going. You know, you think they get better after a decade? Before we get into that, ladies and gentlemen, all the socials will be in the link tree uh, provided. At, you know, you can go to our uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Patreon. Uh, iTunes and Spotify, everything will be all uploaded onto there as, uh, at the conclusion of these episodes. So you can go check it out over there. Um, Paul, rosters are at ninety. Yeah, we, we'll talk about we'll talk about camp as a whole with people making you know reactions to this and that. Like, oh my God, Dawson Knox got a touchdown in, in practice. Great, right? Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, don't care. But the thing is this. <laughs> Let's talk about – let's truly have a discussion about the, the targets that Allen will have. Yeah. And if or, if some of the guys that he's throwing to in in, in camp, he, he'll actually throw to throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like a cut versus keep uh, scenario here. Yeah, so. let's do it. Love it. Let's uh, go. So, obviously, there there are guys that are locks that we always talk about. you got Diggs, yep. Davis, um, McKenzie. I don't think McKenzie's a lock, man. Everybody talks about McKenzie as a lock, and I just don't I don't believe that, right? I think once you got Diggs and you got Davis, and I think really after that, it is those roster spots are open, man. It even for the kids that they drafted, because yeah. making the roster versus going on the practice squad, it's not the same, right? So yeah. if you have all these guys on the roster now and you can't just say, Well, you're gonna go to the practice squad, you have to waive that player or cut them, right? Waivers just allows another team to pick up their contract. Um, So you do have to waive players with under four years of eligibility. It's what you got to do. So players like Marquez Stevenson, he's subject to waivers. You can't put him on the practice squad unless you waive him and any other team can pick him up. Um, Once they clear waivers, if nobody picks him up, then they can be, then you can sign them to your practice squad. But I think we really got to look at six or seven players that Buffalo is going to keep. And then maybe one or two that you put on the practice squad. Um, because there's a lot of pass catchers in Buffalo and I'm totally with you, man. There's only one football to go around. And at some point they can't all be pass catchers. Like you got to have a special teams guy on there. Like you got, there's other things that you need besides guys who just flat out can catch. So outside of Diggs and Davis, I I think it's an open competition for the other five ride receiver spots. I, uh, I venture to say it because we did, we did, we did couple this as a wide receiver versus a, a wide receiver and tight end episode. Yeah. I think really the 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 Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor of this offense is going to be Diggs, Davis, and Knox. Yeah, totally great. Those are we're not even going to talk about that. Yeah, right now. okay. Those are the so then you got um, Khalil Shakir, who has been making some noise in camp. You know, yep. he's, been, he's been doing some really good things. Um, Jamison Crowder, mm-hmm. I, and we talked about McKenzie. Tavon Austin was an interesting one for me. Former mm-hmm. first round pick. Um, which was literally the first year that hashtag debut. That was our first draft. I know. Isn't that crazy? Right. So that's, this, he's been in the league a while. Uh, yeah. Mark West Stevenson, obviously, and Paul brings up a great point. When you guys talk about, you know, oh, they could just put them on the practice squad. Well, there's a system that happens that they have mm-hmm. to subject them to waivers. Once they go to waivers, right. any team can pick them up, but then their, their waiver order is, um, is changed mm-hmm. in that respect. So how that works is, you got to understand too. If the Buffalo Bills invested a draft pick in a certain player, then you're getting rid of that four-year deal that was a guaranteed contract that you can control right. throughout those four years. Now, now he becomes uh, a restricted free agent and becomes exclusive rights free agent. And you know the process we've gone over many times here. At hashtag um, Paul will probably have another article about that soon. But no, I'm saying <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> We have it on, uh, on sports.com. There's there's articles uh, about the salary cap and waivers and, and a bunch of things like that. If you guys want to go check that out. But <clears throat> oh, look into some of these players. I mean, Hodges, I, I just, it, it's a it's a running joke on hashtag now that I just love Hodges. I just I know. Love, we haven't seen him. We just haven't seen him. And they've kept him for a reason. Um, and because nobody has seen him, he was able to get waived and put on the on the practice squad. Mm-hmm. So yep. um, it's one of those things. So. And another name that I have not mentioned yet, and you know I haven't mentioned him yet, O.J. Howard. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, I keep forgetting he's on the team, Mark. I just, I, it got I, signed the same day that Von Miller did, so everyone forgot about him. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, 
probably one of the most athletic tight ends coming out of that draft. But you, you see what the Bills are doing, which is very interesting, is that you got Tavon Austin, you got OJ Howard, two former first round picks. Mm-hmm. What, Paul, in your estimation, what message is the, are, are the Bills saying to are they are they are they signing these guys to say, hey, listen, you know, we, you know, to try to motivate the guys that were drafted after them or free agents, or is do they still see something in these guys? that maybe another system or another player, another team did not see in them. You know, Mar, that's an interesting question, right? Because before Buffalo would have to do this in different ways, like signing former first round players, they were really getting like true reclamation projects. Yeah. And I think OJ Howard kind of signals the fact that like the caliber of player that's willing to come here on a one year deal is increasing, right? Right now, mind you, between Tavon Austin and OJ Howard, you're probably, you're spending what two million dollars a piece if you combine the two of them, yeah. right? Like you're spending no money on those players. Right. So it, yeah, I think that the caliber of player is increasing um, when they're coming here on the one year deals, which is what winning does, right? It makes them makes those players cheaper and makes them more available. It doesn't seem fair, but the fact is, it, it is. And Buffalo's been doing this for a while. They love former first round picks, but they previously had to do it through the waiver process where they would get a guy and they would have to come here with no option. They would just, the you know, player would be waived and they're like, okay, that's it. You're coming here now. Or they'd sign a player off of somebody's practice squad. That was a former first round pick, right? Like that's how they had to do the dirty before was they had to get guys that nobody else really wanted. Uh, now players are coming here out of choice. I think that's a, I think it's a big difference, but it does make this exercise of cut or keep even harder, right? Yeah. Because there's some very good players that the Bills just simply will not have room for. And we should probably start running through like the roster of who you're going to cut and keep, right? Yeah. So you and I agree. Let's just let's start with the tight ends first because that's probably easiest. Dawson Knox is a lock. Do you think OJ Howard makes this squad? 100%. I think yeah, there's I think so. a lot of different things that that uh, Dorsey wants to do with the offense, especially in the two tight end set. Going to Cromer's zone scheme, which we will get to a little bit later. Yep. Um, and all that. Sweeney, you know, the guys just battled injury and COVID over the last two or three years. Um, you know, and you got a couple other guys that you 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 signed in there, uh, obviously Windermere and Morris, but it's okay. Those are those are depth guys. Those are okay. What could you do? What, what do you want to put on tape? Because everyone's looking. This is this is the key. This is the key now. Everyone's looking at Buffalo. Mm-hmm. You're the big dog in the yard now. I mean, they didn't win the Super Bowl, obviously, but a lot of right. pundits are saying that they're gonna be the best team in the NFL. Okay, what can you put on tape? What could what could I say to another coach about you mm-hmm. if you're not going to make this team or if you right. don't want to stay on our practice squad? So right. I think you, you're going to go with uh, Knox, Howard, uh, Knox and Howard, and then you'll have Sweeney as, as practice squad guy. Right? Yeah, I think Sweeney's Sweeney's a practice squad guy. I, he missed a season because of uh, myocarditis, which is which was a heart condition uh, believed yeah. to be caused by COVID, um, and just ultimately is battled. Uh, to stay on the roster, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not that he's a, a bad player, but I, I think with the signing of OJ Howard, that signals Tommy Sweeney to the practice squad. I think you wave him. I don't think he gets picked up, um, and, and he probably ends up on your practice squad. Okay, so that gets us through the tight ends. Wide receiver, you and I both know Diggs and Davis. You are locked in, and that is probably your one and two, right? Yeah. But the rest of the roster is stacked. So uh, let's I didn't start. Kumaro is over 30. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Like, I didn't I know. <laughs> well, he was on ice in Green Bay for so long, dude. They don't age up there. Okay. So, you, know, what the heck? you think, <laughs> you think Kumaro there. makes the roster? I think he does. I think Kumaro does make the roster because of the the guys that you – you think about the guys that they lost. Mm-hmm. You think about the guys that are coming in and stuff. He is always going to be that that special teams guy that c- that could come in for you if if you need it, like break glass in case of emergency. Right. He's been in the system. He's he's developed some chemistry with Allen. Um, I remember that one touchdown he caught in uh, in Denver mm-hmm. that got glued to his chest. Um, but you know, you talking about like if you want to talk about special teams guys, you're not asking Diggs. You're not asking Davis. Mm-hmm. McKenzie. Early reports in camp are that he's not he's not doing a lot of special teams work. Right. So yep. uh, Crowder, mm, no. Shakir, probably you could ask him. Mm-hmm. I mean, but Marquez, other than Marquez Stevenson, who else are you going to ask to be a, a special teams guy 
out of your receiver group? Are those guys just going to be purely receivers? Well, like, that's what's yeah. so wild, right? I think that you've seen what McKenzie can give you on special teams, so why spend time there? But they've not been short on bringing in guys who could do special teams work. Marquez Stevenson, Tavon Austin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even Crowder used to return kicks. Like, that's what I think makes somebody like Jamison Crowder all the more valuable because – he can return kicks for you because it's that used to be something he did because how many times have we seen Micah Hyde back there returning punts? It's maddening, right? Oh. That's why I think a player like Jamison Crowder, if you're trying to split hairs, makes the team over McKenzie. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't see Isaiah McKenzie making this team. I said the same thing last year. I was shocked when he made it. But wow. if I'm looking at players, McKenzie and Crowder are too similar to me. So I'm keeping Crowder over McKenzie I mean, Crowder has just proven his mettle throughout the course of his NFL career. He has had some durability issues, but I think his skill set's replaceable. And I think McKenzie's a guy that you just let go out there, and I don't know where he lands. Because I don't think he really gives you much on offense unless it's sleight of hand, you know? And I think that was kind of proven by his snap count has just been plummeting over the years, right? So I, I'm thinking Jamison Crowder makes it. Isaiah McKenzie's cut. You think he's gonna get cut? You don't yeah. think they're gonna have him as like an insurance policy because you know no. how he does those insurance policies. No. So who's your top six as far as receivers go? So uh, obviously Diggs uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, Gabe Davis. Uh, Crowder is there. They're not gonna let Shakir go, right? No. So Shakir, um, I do agree with you. I think Kumaro makes the roster, right? And then after that, I mean, it's sort of a knife fight between. Uh, Marquez Stevenson, whom we really got a very brief look at last year. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a knife fight between Isaiah Hodges and Marquez Stevenson. And the reason I say that is just simply because um, you can get a guy like Tavon Austin. He'll be available. If you cut him, he'll still be there. Like, he's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not, the, it's not the most intimidating wide receiver group, really, when you take a step back and look at it. No. The, these aren't names that are going to strike fear in the hearts of other people. Um, but I think with the players you can keep, their skill sets replaceable if you were to lose them. So I don't see somebody like Neil Paolo, the the wide receiver out of BYU. I just don't see it happening for him. I don't see it happening for Tanner Gentry. I don't see it happening for I, – I got to be honest with you, I don't see Hodges making the team. He's probably, again, your practice squad guy. He'll definitely be on practice squad, I think. Yeah. I think one of the – I mean, they do enjoy those practice squad guys and guys that have been playing with – with Allen and that system for a while. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of those guys are sneaky. You know, they'll, they'll, mm, they like to take those guys and try to learn what's going on at, at one bill's drive and stuff. Right. I don't know, man. I got, <clears throat> I got Stevenson. I got Stevenson and Hodges on the practice squad and mm -hmm. I got the top six. I got, I got Diggs, Davis and Crowder. Mm -hmm. And then I got Kumaro, Shakir and McKenzie. I, yeah. I, I have because that's I, very I, likely Mark, to be honest with you, that's a very likely group. Well, when they had Beasley, they still had McKenzie. I think you always have to have that slot slot guy back up yeah. just in case something happens. Right. You always got to have that insurance policy. And I think well, Bean likes to have that insurance policy. And the fact that McKenzie was willing to come back on a, on a cheaper deal. Yeah. I mean, and, he, he and does to be provide And to be fair, Mar, when they signed Emmanuel Sanders, we thought he was going to be working out of the slot because that's where we saw him in New Orleans. Just because Jamison Crowder played primarily slot with the Giants, he yeah. played outside in Washington, you know, so he can play anywhere. Maybe we're... Maybe may, maybe this is a Paul problem. Maybe I'm pigeonholing Crowder to the slot. He's yeah. played everywhere, and he can play everywhere. And we've seen Buffalo not be afraid to put a guy like Emmanuel Sanders outside when he had played previous seasons with Drew Brees and was a wonderful slot receiver for Brees. Um, but they didn't use him like that, right? And you probably don't need to because you got those freaks in uh, Dawson Knox and O.J. Howard. Like, you got freaks at the tight end position. It could be said. Maybe, maybe it said that, you know, Manuel Sanders was brought in to try to um, show Gabe Davis how it's done as a number two in the NFL, and we saw what happened with the result of that was. Maybe Crowder's there to show some of these guys, other guys in the slot how it's supposed to be done. Right. I mean, if you think about the slot receivers over the years, you're talking about Welker. You're talking about Edelman. You're talking about Beasley. You're talking about Crowder. You're talking about a lot of – Austin was in that role for a while. Yeah. I mean, right. so – it's great to it's great to have what what the Buffalo Bills have right now because of the success that they've enjoyed. They have options, mm -hmm. and I think I, I you know I don't think you're going wrong with either of our position groups. I don't right. think either of those are wrong, but I am I am interested in seeing. You got to know this. It depends on their investment in OJ Howard. If they think yeah. OJ Howard is one of those guys, putting him in the slot, 
Good luck. Eighty million wide receivers then. So they might cut even more than we think. Maybe. If ends up panning out to be the athlete that we thought he was coming out of college. Mm-hmm. You may not need a any get any you don't even need that many wide receivers. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Now, if you've got roster predictions for the pass catchers for the Buffalo Bills wide receiver tight end, drop those in the comments section. Um, if you want to make a case for Tanner Gentry, I challenge you to make a case for Tanner Gentry. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Come at me. I, I'm all about that smoke. You want to give me Tanner Gentry smoke? I'm all about that Tanner Gentry smoke. Let's I go. Love the Tanner Gentry smoke. So amazing. <laughs>